that song reminds me that we were not the only ones to get captured by the police. Do you remember when you first got arrested? Yes, I do, and it was all because of you. What? What do you mean? Well, I mean, that time we lived in Wilkstone, I was about to leave school. Must have been 30 years ago. No. I can't see how that was my fault. Well, if it wasn't for you, it wouldn't have happened. No, you're wrong. No, no. Don't you remember? 1963. 1963? Bastards. Oh, what have you been up to, Mick? Don't worry, I've got it back. It looks like you've been in the ring with Floyd Patterson. Those bastards must have broke my nose. Was it them boys from Lock Marston? Yeah, it was. There were three of them, I didn't let that bother me. Ah. How'd you manage that then? Well, it took a bit of persuasion, but don't worry, I won't bother you again. Why? What do you do? Well, don't worry about it, I'll sort it. I'll tell you later when Mum's not around, all right? Okay. But better clean your nose up before Mum sees it. Yeah. Before Mum sees what? What have you done? A bit of an accident, nothing to worry about it, don't fuss. Let me see. Ow! Have you been fighting again? No. Oh, you got blood on your nose. Well, I slipped a bang my face on the handlebars. Well. Go and clean your face and I'll have a closer look afterwards. David, the next time Mrs Bishop comes to the side of the shop, you must not let her in. Oh, why is that then? Because she steals cigarettes when you serve her. Oh, I see. That's why she comes on a Wednesday afternoon. She knows you're not there. You know, I won't let her in next time. Or you can just tell her it's our half day and we are closed. Oh. It's not very nice when these things happen. No. No. The village life is so different to living in Watford. Everybody seems so. Everybody else is business. Let me see. Oh, that's better. Now, you need to be more careful next time. Now, Dad says you have a job in midwinters when you leave school. What kind of job is it? And how are you going to get to work? I'm going to be a trainee carpenter. No problem getting to work. I'm getting a motorbike. I can ride that when I'm 16. Cool, that's good, mate. What kind of bike are you going to get? Well, I'm getting the 250 Beezer. It's a side valve engine with telescopic front forks. Really? Yeah, that means I won't be stuck in this village. I'll be able to ride to wherever I want to. Good. I'll be able to ride to Watford. I'll get caught stuck in this village, so there's nothing to do. Oh, I know. And where are you going to get from? From Bob Shearer down at Dunstan Farm in Trim. Oh, is that one of the boys from your school? Yeah, Mum, and his dad's got a farm, and that's where we learned to ride our motorbikes. You never told me that. When was that? Oh, well, it's after school, Mum. Mick, Mick's got a 350 Triumph, and we learned to ride that bike in that field. That sounds dangerous to me. No, not really. We ride it around the field. It's not much bigger than the moped. Well, you must be careful, because I hear those boys are very bad there. No, not really. It's just they get bored living in dream, because there's nothing to do. What's that you're reading about in your magazine? Oh, Mum, it's about transistors and valves. They're completely different, but this is far more interesting. It's about Christine Keeler and John Profumo, that Minister in Parliament. And you know what? You know you clip Mike around the ear for telling lies. If John Profumo is your son, would you clip him round the ear for telling lies to Parliament? Of course I would. You get clipped for reading it. Oh, hello, how can I help, officer? I'd like to speak to Michael as we've had a report of an incident in the village. Well, why do you want to see him? He's done nothing wrong. What's this about? You'd better speak to both in private, then on the doorstep, as it is a serious matter. You'd better come in. I don't want the old village talking. Michael, there's a police officer to see you. Yeah, what about? We've had a report that you assaulted a boy from the next village, and two other boys saw you do it. Well, I don't know about that. I just went to get my brother's smoke back. They'd stolen from the field. The boy said you hit him with a piece of metal. I don't know. There were three of them. And when I went to get the moped back, things got awkward, and one of them tried to fight me. So, why did you hit him? Well, I wasn't going to let him get away. If it's so I hit him, something I had in my hand before they got to me. And what do you have in your hand, sonny? Part which I'd made for the moped to fix the saddle. 
Show me that part. Here it is in my pocket. I made it in the metalwork class at school just to hold the saddle down on the moped. And why is this soft cushioning on the inside of this piece of metal? That's to stop the seat rattling on the moped. <laughs> this fits nicely over the hand. And with this cushioning on the inside, looks remarkably like an homemade knuckle duster. No, no, I made it for the moped and it was free as then. Michael's just told you he made it at school for David's moped. Yeah, you tell him, Mum. He should be going getting the lads that took our moped. It is a serious offence <coughs> making a knuckle duster and, and as well. Well, no, no. Listen, you don't know what you're talking about. There were three of them. Oh. Michael Clark and arrested you no. on a charge of making an offence no. with weapon no, it and it causing grievous body arms. He's the carry in prison. Again. Michael John Clark, you have been found guilty of making an offensive weapon and causing grievous bodily harm. I sentence you to a three month prison sentence in Her Majesty's Detention Centre, Kidlington. This is designed as a short, sharp shock for boys like you.